The Lord be with you. And Keep us. comfort and peace in this season of troubles in our nation as we pray to our Lord this evening. We'll be using the order of Compline for this, our fourth Lenten midweek. So it'll be on page 253. We'll also show it to you.
grace and his peace and his mercy be unto you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ and in his name. Amen. Our sermon text this evening comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, beginning in the 23rd chapter at the 26th verse. As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing the responsory on page 255. Into your hands, O Lord.
and also here. This evening we gather in this midweek Lenten service as we walk with our Lord through these 40 days. Our Lord, on the way of sorrows, and this evening, the places of the passion. The way of sorrows is a place of tears. They led him away. They led him away after demanding the notorious Barabbas. They took him away through those busy, narrow streets of old Jerusalem, leading Jesus to his death. For the Jewish council and the high priests there leading them had called him a blasphemer and a fraud. And then taking him to Pilate, who presided over that Gentile court, Pilate, who could find no reason to place a charge against Jesus, somehow, out of pressure, sentences him to death anyway, making Jesus an enemy of Rome. So he's rejected by both the Jews and the Gentiles. So Jesus, on the way of sorrows, that way, and perhaps you've seen pictures of the way, even today, the Via Dolorosa, the way of sorrows, He's shoved along those narrow streets. It's about 2,000 feet or so. Some were weeping. Some were jeering at him and even perhaps spitting upon him. And Jesus had already been scourged, a beating so terrible that men sometimes died of scourging alone. It explains that in old traditions, Jesus falls along the way of sorrows, that he struggles under the weight of the heavy cross. And the soldiers, too, those Romans tasked with executing prisoners, they, too, were impatient. To them, Jesus is just another troublesome Jew to be put to death. And so they conscript Simon of Cyrene. You, you are going to help him carry his cross. And those streets, crowded with people, curious to see Jesus of Nazareth, this famous prophet and teacher and rabbi, this worker of miracles that so many had placed their hopes in, Jesus is being shoved down the street, covered in blood and condemned to death. And so many wept. Many cried out at the injustice of the scene. For they had hoped that Jesus was their Messiah, and now Rome is about to kill him. What would become of them? What would become of their hope, they wondered. Tears wet the pavement of the Via Dolorosa, and the sound of wailing and crying could be heard. And yet, even as we've sung in the hymn, the Lamb of God went uncomplaining forth. Like Hebrews says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning the shame. For the joy that was set before him, the joy of being our Savior, the joy of having you redeemed and with him one day in heaven, having you redeemed and enjoying eternal life. For the joy that was set before him, he scorned the shame. Oh, and it was a day of shame. There was so much shame that day. A day that ironically we call Good Friday, and for us it is good. But there is shame. And like nothing else, we tend to flee from shame. Shame that first began in the Garden of Eden. On Good Friday it comes to its zenith. Adam's descendants didn't only hide from God in the garden like Adam and Eve did because they were ashamed. No, Adam's descendants have fallen further. Now, they don't merely hide. No, they mock God. They shove him along. Others curse at him. Now, there's an old tradition on Good Friday. And it's a tradition of remembering specifically the events along the Via Dolorosa, the Way of Sorrows, with what's sometimes numbered as 14 different stations of the cross. And that means like events along the way, stations. Now, 
from at least the 15th century, there's many churches that have held a service on the afternoon of Good Friday. And the Stations of the Cross is a common service, at least in Roman Catholic circles, but a little less so in Lutheran and other churches. And that's probably because the original version of the station service includes some events of the 14 that aren't mentioned in Scripture. And the events are plausible enough. They're things like Jesus falling down three times along the way. But since they're not in Scripture, well, you know, that seemed to be kind of a problem. So when Lutherans observe the stations of the cross, it's a little different because we only use the events that are recorded in Scripture. Oh, but I have good news for our Roman Catholic friends. The Lutheran version of the Stations of the Cross finally, after, well, hundreds of years, gets papal approval in 1991 when Pope John Paul II, seeing that there was a problem with having Stations of the Cross that really weren't verified by Scripture, plausible as they may have been, he introduced a scriptural Stations of the Cross for use, first in Rome, and then later, in 2007, Pope Benedict XVI approves it for use in Roman Catholic congregations. So after all those years of the Lutherans saying, well, look, it's a beautiful way to remember the way of the sorrows, but let's keep it scriptural, finally the word of God prevailed. So they too have a scriptural stations of the cross. Now, according to those traditional events, Perhaps Jesus did fall along the Via Dolorosa. It's possible he would have been shoved along or someone even deliberately tripped him. All the sins of the human race, all the shame, that rebellion against God, the defiance even of God's own chosen people who chose to worship idols instead of the one true God, the shame that we bear today in our own generation. While we've stood mutely by while Sunday morning children's sports take priority over the worship of God. The shame of our own generation that mocks the sanctity of marriage with couples living together, mocks marriage with same-sex couples pretending to marry. Oh, but the shame The shame really is that it's zenith on Good Friday. Shame that had its origin in human sin from one generation to the next. And all of that, that shame that we flee from is poured out on Jesus. His humiliation is because of us. It's for our sin. It's for our disregard of his word and his commandments. His humiliation is because of us, because of our idolatry, because we fear, love, and trust in other things than God. It's all because of us, as he's shoved down the streets of Jerusalem. Yet this Lamb of God went uncomplaining forth, the innocent substitute for we, the guilty. But Luke writes, there followed him a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. There were those who saw the injustice of it. But turning to them, Jesus said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Because Jesus knows what's coming. He knows the judgment that's going to come upon the city of Jerusalem. A terrible judgment because of Good Friday. The year 70 AD was only about 37 years off when armies of Rome under General Titus would surround that city and would finally breach its walls and tear the beautiful second temple into ruin. Yes, Jesus saw that sad day coming. And that's why he says to them, mourn for you and for your children. He says earlier in the Gospel of Luke, O Jerusalem, 
Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing? He had been standing on the Mount of Olives looking over Jerusalem, knowing its fate was sealed with their rejection. So terrible was the second fall of the city of Jerusalem that Jesus describes it this way. Behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they'll begin to say the mountains fall on us, to the hills cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Well, the green tree is Jesus, who's perfect, who's full of eternal life, who is without sin. But we are the dry because of our sin. And apart from the Holy Spirit, we're blind and dead. Now, though, we are made alive in Christ, and the waters of holy baptism have renewed us to begin to make us again into the green trees. But an old theologian who wrote in the 1700s in England by the name of Matthew Henry writes this. He reflects on the text we've had this evening, and he says, The sufferings of our Lord Jesus should engage us to stand in awe of the justice of God and to tremble before him. What he means is when we see the suffering of Jesus, when we see the wrath that is poured out upon him for sin, it ought to wake us up that we would stand in awe at God's justice and have a true godly fear of him. The problem is, we don't have the awe, nor the respect for God that we should have. And if holy angels bow and veil their faces to his presence, then why is it that we don't have more respect for God? Why do we continue to place trivial things above him? If the green tree of Jesus suffered so, how much more terrible will it be for those who continue to reject and to rage against God? So on the Via Dolorosa, the way of tears, Jesus is driven through the streets of old Jerusalem like a common criminal. It was one of the places of the Passion. It was a place for many tears. But he did this for us, so that we are now set free from sin, from the wrath that we've earned. It's been laid upon him. He bore the wrath of God for our shame, and he bore the shame for us. The Lamb of God went uncomplaining forth all along the way of tears, the Via Dolorosa, for you and me. In his name, amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now we'll continue with the prayers. Page 255 and following. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace 
and let your blessing be on us always, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal God, the hours both of day and night are yours, and to you the darkness is no threat. Be present, we pray, with those who labor in these hours of night, especially those who watch and work on behalf of others. Grant them diligence in their watching, faithfulness in their service, courage in danger, and competence in emergencies. Help them to meet the needs of others with confidence and compassion. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Abide with us, Lord, for it is toward evening. The day is far spent. Abide with us and with your whole church. Abide with us at the end of the day, at the end of our life, at the end of the world. Abide with us with your grace and goodness, with your holy word and sacrament, with your strength and blessing. Abide with us when the night of affliction and temptation comes upon us, the night of fear and despair, the night when death draws near. Abide with us and with all the faithful, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Guide us, waking O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord,
as we walk together in the way of Jesus, in the places of the Passion. And I pray that God will give you courage in this time of trouble, provide for all your needs, and comfort you for whatever troubles you. In his name, the Lord be with you. Amen.